In this video we're going to start to talk about the data-driven aspects of Fulcro and also how the database is organized so that all of this works in a way that minimizes complexity. So we're starting to get to the real meat of things. So you've seen some basic mutations, you've seen some basic ways of creating UI, so you've seen something dance a little bit, but um, now we need to, to beef it up. So I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of creating yet another namespace, queries and idents. Uh, I've thrown that into cards. I've pulled over our to-do item from the prior uh, video along with the, the kind of crappy mutations that we've, we have so far. Um, and I'm going to change uh, my application to have a root. I want a, a thing that actually corresponds with the root of the application. Um, and I've already reloaded that. You can see that it doesn't have anything going uh, just yet. Um, and I've forgotten to pull over my... Oh, I didn't have a factory. All right. So that means now I need a factory. do items and I'm going to go ahead and give this root node some initial state I'm not going to put anything in it quite yet so my plan here is to at the root node now instead of having the to do item land in the root node I'm going to have the root node contain to do items right some sort of propagating things out this is really kind of cool because in dev cards you can do exactly this with Fulcro. You can build your individual pieces and then uh, seamlessly transition them outward uh, without having to change the component itself. So the component can be relocated, the database will self-heal, all sorts of cool stuff happens. Um, but for now we're just going to start with to-do items uh, being an empty vector. Um, and then I'm going to pretend like I'm going to get some of those to-do items and map over uh, those items. Now I, I don't have them yet because I've made the vector empty. Now initial state has two forms. One, you just give it a map and you're just basically putting that, that map in initial state. Um, you can also wrap it in a lambda uh, where you're past params where you can accept data from someone who's uh, embedding this component uh, within themselves. So I'm going to say keys here for the params and I'm going to say oh, send me an ID and a label. And I'll, I'll default complete and editing to false but send me an ID and a label uh, so that I can sort of make a constructor out of this. right? And editing and should also default to false so now I'm making something that's a little more reusable. And so then up here at the root level I can do the same sort of thing in this case I don't really need the params but I, I, um, and now I can use prim git initial state to pull initial state for a to do item. So I'm going to make item 1 with label A and then I'm going to repeat myself a few times with some different IDs and different pieces. And remember this is initial state so it won't be in there until I restart the application which I can do by reloading the browser. And now I have three to-do items and they're rendering. Now note this still has the same problem we saw before that I'm essentially going to end up creating a tree of stuff if I keep down this path. Like if I were to put a to-do list component in between root and the to-do item these to-do items would move down into the to-do list. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so let's make a defsc to do list that represents this component and this guy's going to want um, some some data so the list itself might have a name. Uh, it might be something we persist on the database so let's go ahead and give it an ID as well and then the list is going to have items. Um, and it's a good idea to namespace your keywords. You'll benefit in all sorts of ways, everything from closure spec to just clarity of thought. Um, and so in a to-do list we're going to have uh, maybe a div, uh, maybe we'll have an h4 uh, that has the list's name, uh, and then it's, instead of having this down here uh, we can 
we can do it up here. So that's what a to-do list looks like. And a to-do list's initial state now looks more like this. Right? So you see I just literally just picked it up and plopped it down up here. Uh, and I'm going to change its, its property name so it matches up. And I'm also going to give the list uh, a name from, why not, the parameters. Okay, um, so now I can create an initial to-do list. Now, you know, if I have these persisted on the server, I probably wouldn't manually hand code the data into the UI, uh, but this, this demonstrates uh, the, you know, key principle here. So now I want to uh, root. Well, root's initial state, well, it's just a composition of, of all these pieces. So now, instead of to-do items, I might have root, uh, I don't know, the to-do list. So roots to-do list is a whatever I need to make a to-do list with an ID of one and a name of my list. Close the map, oh, close the call, close the map, close the initial state format we should see something prettier happen there and then of course I'm going to need a factory to do this is a factory um, to do lists and I'm pulling that out of the database here at root a parenthesis or something. Yeah, that, that initial state, lambda. That all straightened out. All right, so now if I re reload my initial state, I now see a tree of data to go with my tree of UI to-do list comes down to the to-do list properties, which then comes down to the list items properties, which is then a vector of the individual items. Now let's think about the mutations we wrote earlier. If I scroll back up here, these are no longer going to work, right? If I go in here and try to check this thing, it's making true and false back at the root, right? You see that right here. And my to-do item isn't actually changing. Uh, now, if you think about what you might might first be tempted to do, it would be an update in or an associend following down this entire path. We're not going to do that. That would be horrible. In order to straighten this out though, we want to switch over to using a data-driven approach. So we need to add two different pieces to our components uh, to make data driving, to make the data-driven aspect happen and to clean up this database. Uh, so when I say data-driven, I really am talking about talking to servers, and this assists with that as well. Um, but I'm also talking about driving data into your user interface um, uh, in a way where you ask for what you want. So the first thing we want to specify is the query. Um, now the query for the component is relative to the component. So when I'm making to-do items query, I go and look at a to-do item and I say, oh, well, what I want out of a to-do item? Well. Let's see now, I probably want the database ID. I want the item's label. I want whether or not the item is complete. And I'd like to know whether or not I'm supposed to be editing it. In other words, I need everything that I've destructured up here. Now, Fulcro, the DefSC macro, is really nice. It, uh, if you mistype something here, it will actually give you an error and tell you, uh, you, you destructured item complete but it's not in your query. So it's, it's giving you a, a hand here. You said you were going to pull this out of the, the data, but since you didn't query for it, you're not going to get it. Um, so when you make typos uh, in either side, um, you'll get that same sort of message. You know, item CM pleat uh, isn't in your query. So as soon as you add a query, you start getting some validation. So for example, if you, um, well, that's, that's the, the extent of them for the moment. Okay. So 
nothing really uh, uh, too extreme there. Now as we move up the tree we have to create queries for each piece as we go because the queries have to compose all the way to root. So a component its query in isolation it doesn't know which to do item you want to query for. Right? It could be any of those three. So the, the query is contextual and this is very important. So the, the very much like the initial state is structured as a tree, the query is structured as a tree. This seems repetitive and boilerplate at first, but you'll see the advantages as we go. So we're going to go to the to-do list and we're going to repeat the same exercise. So a to-do list has a query. And what does it need? Well, it needs its DBID. It needs its name. And it needs its items. Well, but what, are, what, are, what goes in the items, right? Well, we shouldn't have to worry about from the to-do list perspective what a to-do list item wants. Instead, we should delegate that down just like we did for initial state, right? We didn't hand type what a to-do item uh, uh, looks like in terms of initial state. We did have to pass it parameters, but that's different. And so the same thing's going to happen here. So we create what's called in the query uh, parlance a join. And joins are simply a two, you know, a single entry map where we ask for the query of another item, another component. So now we've said that to-do lists need an ID, they need their name, and they need items. And the items are going to need some data that we don't know what it is, but we know they're going to need it. Right? So this adds in our query for our to-do list. And then we walk up to root, because this is where our data actually lives, is in the root node. It's where it's, it's anchored, and we add a query here. So the query, and this guy needs to be everything that we want to destruct, destructure at least. And a to-do list needs to be a join. And this can be a to one or a too many. They look exactly the same. It's, it's determined by what's in your database, uh, what ends up coming out. Uh, we'll get the query for a to-do list. Okay, so you can see structuring the query is very straightforward, somewhat mechanical, um, seems like boilerplate and redundant, but again, this becomes really valuable in a moment. Now, one of the things that's going on behind the scenes is this get query is associating the component um, with that segment of the query, which is going to be important in our next step. Um, but let me just go ahead and show you that if, if I... Um, were to do something like not ask for, um, well, in fact, I'll get an error if I if I don't ask for something and it's needed. Um, uh, but if I let me let me take this out so the error checking is okay. Um, and then down here, um, where is it getting name from? Oh, name is now a function. Uh, that's a, a function in Closure Scripts. Why it's not giving us an error? So let's just put um, some some simple text there. So you can see, oh, by the way, when I added this React key, I forgot to mention this, you query for it, you destructure it, you put it on the key to your root node. This causes Fulcro's def card system uh, uh, will change this React key every time hot code reload happens, which you'll see now my UI is refreshing even though my data is not changing. Uh, that's because this React key changes every time, and when React sees a key on an element change, it doesn't pay any attention to the short circuiting. It just re-renders that entire DOM. It actually could be kind of flickery because it really does throw away the DOM and put in new. Well, actually, it's just a VDOM diff. Never mind. Okay, so um, we've got our queries, and now if I go in here and I do something like oh, this, has to be a if I call this props. Um, we'll see in the console down here um, that the properties that get printed out, we don't see a list name. We see DBID and list items. Um, and even if I don't destructure it, if I add it to the query, and I may have to reload to, no, it went. Um, then you see list names now coming through again. So. So you can actually see the data-driven aspect of this, where we're, we're really selecting what comes to a component, but in a component relative sense. So the graph queries, it's really important. They are relative to root, um, or relative 
to their parent, actually, is the, the proper way to think about it. So the final piece of this, this puzzle that puts things into place. Any item that has a distinct um, uh, identity, say on a database, um, can be normalized right, into a database table. And that, in fact, is our secret weapon. So the ident option on DefSC tells the system that you would like to give this particular component an identity in the database because it's either persisted or you'd like to manipulate it. Um, so in most cases, in fact, if it's anything other than root, you want an ident. Um, the convention is to give uh, uh, well, idents are a vector of two elements. The first element has to be a keyword, and the keyword is naming the table that you want to store this kind of thing in, um, slash, and then what is going to be indexed by. And then the second element of the ident, let's do this as a lambda so you actually see, um, is a property from the props, and we destructured them up here, that's the actual ID of the thing. Now there's a shorthand for this, um, right? I mean, we could do it the really long way and see. I want to get dbid out of props, right? So that's that's one way we could take it down to just we've already destructured it up here in the properties, so we can just use it if we're in the lambda form, or if we don't want to write a lambda and we just want to give it as a template, we can just name which property is the identity of the item. Now, the interesting thing that happens here is if I now reload the app, you'll see that my to-do items, oh, no, you won't, ident, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my to-do list, right, my to-do list is what I just gave an identity. My root to-do list is no longer part of the tree. It now has an ident in it, which is the table name and the ID of the thing that would be here if it were a tree. So this is an edge. This is my my uh, root node. My root node has an edge. Could be too one or too many. This is the pointer that points me to the thing. Now I go look in this table, in this ID, and I find the rest of the data. Now if I walk up and do this exercise again on my to-do item, give it a different table name to do item by ID, same same keyword for pulling the, the actual ID, and re or reload my initial state, I now have a normalized database. My to-do items are in a database table by their ID. They're, th they're, a, they're in a SOS in three levels deep to any property. And this location in the database is independent of where they're at on the UI. And this is what enables powerful levels of refactoring. The combination of the initial state composing, the query composing, and the ident normalizing things makes it possible for me to now write mutations uh, that are completely sane. So you can see my root to-do list points at to-do list 1. To-do list 1 has a name and points at items, or has items, which is a too-many relation, right? You see it's a vector of idents to these three to-do items. In the next video, we'll talk about actually writing the mutation to manipulate these things in a sane way.